Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, welcome to part two of Hexa Alternative uh, or XCut Alternative. So first of all, we'll just talk briefly about the geometry of Hexa and the grinding wheel and how to set that all up. So when we look at this drawer in here, this represents the grinding wheel. And this is the top plate cutting angle that's here. Now, most top plate cutting angles, and that's the angle that the grinding wheel comes in down on the tooth, is at 60 degrees. 99% of chainsaw uh, uh, tooth have that angle. The top plate angle, which is generally, and that's viewed from the top of the tooth, is generally anywhere from about 25 degrees to about 30. So this angle here on full chisel would be 25 degrees and on semi chisel about 30. But it's this angle going in to the hexa that is normally about 65 degrees and this angle going down here is 60 degrees. The span of hexa is 60 degrees in, 60 degrees out, but you can tilt it. And that's what, what we're saying is that even though you've got a span of 120 degrees, you tilt this to an angle of 65 degrees. Now, down here we've got Oregon, we've got still, and we've got 65 degrees here, and we've got 25 degrees there. This is exactly the same. The only difference being is it still use zero degrees reference point, and 90 degrees uh, is used by Oregon which is their vertical reference point. So when you put it up on 90 degrees, that is your reference point, and you will move it to the 65 degree position. That means that you've only moved from 90 degrees to 65 degrees to the right, so you've only moved it 25 degrees. On an, a still, you start off at zero degrees up the top here as your reference point, you move to the 25 degree position, which means that the 25 degrees has moved from zero to the left. So still use zero degrees for the uh, grinding head and Oregon use 90 degrees for the grinding head. A lot of people in engineering use 90 degrees as a reference point. It's the same angle, exactly the same. It's no different. It's just a, a different reference point. So we come in at this angle, which is the most critical. Now, when we come in at this angle on the hexa, it comes in on the side plate almost about, it doesn't go all the way down the side plate, but it goes roughly between 70, 80% before it changes direction to the other 60 degrees going down. And then it changes another 60 degrees and goes along the bottom like that. So you've got your total of your 120 degrees. And as you can see on this drawing here, is that you've got your two parallel sections of the wheel, and like down on this drawing here, when it's square, that's your 90 degrees. Add another 30 degrees, so 90. So we have a look here. 90 degrees, 30 degrees equals 120. So that's where your 120 degrees is. Now, I've done experimentation and I've gone from even 90 degrees, so I've, I've virtually had 60 degrees coming in and this angle hasn't been as steep. So I've played around with all different angles. And the moment that you have the side plate on a straight angle, it is actually quite aggressive. So when we look at this tooth here, this angle here is always around the 60 degree, 65 degree mark. You can play with this angle a little bit. It doesn't seem to make a lot of difference. Now, the other thing is still put a patent out on this uh, hexa. And what that patent does effectively stops other people from uh, trying to copy it. But Husqvarna already had their X-cut. Now, their X-cut has a 40-degree angle coming in. Very, very aggressive. 
on this angle here. Their angle on the side plate only comes down the side plate probably half of the way, then has a C shape. I find out that this shape on the bottom is really not that critical. So, you know, you can, I've experimented. I used to call it V-cut, and I used to have my, my spacing at 90 degrees, and I would... So rather than 120 degree angle here, I had uh, 90 degrees. And I found out it worked okay. So, and that, as I said, the most important part's this angle here, this one that's coming in top plate cutting angle. Now, the only other thing, I've got another note up here, only the first 1.5 millimeter of the tooth will penetrate the wood. The rest of the side plate will cut the loose fibers. So essentially, when we look at a tooth like this, only about 1.5 millimetres of this part here digs into the log. So as it bites into the log, it only penetrates no more than 1.5 millimetres uh, by the time you get down to the end of the life if you're using a progressive depth gauge. Even though that the rake is set at 0.65 of a millimetre, it does bite in a little bit deeper than that. Uh, and the rest of the side plate, this really, to me, the only thing that this part does virtually from about here to here, which is what you'll see on the Husqvarna's X-cut, the C-shape down the bottom, it really only severs loose fibres, uh, and, and that's why the working corner. The other thing is, when you look at... Now, the other thing that's interesting, when you look at the top plate of the hexa, and it's 25 degrees, the 65 degrees here is really 25 degrees on a still, as we mentioned before. So when you look at it from this angle, it looks like a spear. And that's why it works so good as it penetrates the timber. And due to the rotational forces, it pulls the tooth back out and the tooth becomes straight again until it digs into the next bit of timber. And all the left and the right teeth are doing the same thing behind the one that's in front, digging in and then going straight, lifting the chip out. So a chainsaw chain doesn't cut in the true sense. It removes chips left and right, left and right. And essentially that makes a groove and i guess we can call that cutting motion so yeah that's how it works it just takes thousands of thousands of chips out and it's probably in excess of twenty five thousand chips per minute depends in depending on the speed if you're doing around about twelve thousand rpm and if you're using a 3.8 chain and it's traveling at 100 kilometers an hour I've done the mathematics, and it's around twenty-five to 30,000 chips per minute. It's actually quite a lot. And I think the reason that the hexa stays a lot sharper than the traditional uh, full chisel is mainly because this angle and this angle, because of the spear-type shape, penetrates a lot easier and it's, it's more efficient at penetrating the wood. So it takes a little bit longer to get duller. I haven't got any stats on it, but I suspect it could be anywhere between 10 and 15% uh, stays sharper, longer than full chisel, which would almost bring it in line with semi-chisel, because semi-chisel stays sharper a lot longer. Last time I went out using the hexa, I was very surprised how long I could cut uh, before I had to uh, re resharpen or change the chain over. So I'm very impressed with Hexa. To me, it's the best type of chain in clean wood, especially in uh, soft uh, wood. It just cuts through it like a knife through butter. So what we'll do next is have a look at the grinding uh, wheel and the easiest way to get that hexa profile on your grinding wheel. Okay, so we're going to go over a simple step-by-step -step procedure about uh, how to dress your wheel uh, to get a hexa profile or hexagonal or whether it's uh, Husqvarna's X-cut. 
in either case, we'll address that. So normally you'd need yourself an Oregon, this is an Oregon clone uh, of a 511X, I think it is, the Oregon grinder. Brilliant grinder, this is a clone. Uh, you'll see them on eBay, you'll see them all over the place. Typically they're only worth about $150 here in Australia. Uh, through Jono and Jono, uh, so and overseas is they go by all different names too. They're all made in China and they're all rebadged, but nonetheless they're actually made quite well because there's very little plastic in them, and it's all aluminium all over, so it's, they're made really well. They're not as good as a genuine Oregon, but I'll tell you what, they're not far off it. And they take a wheel, so this wheel here is 4.7 millimeters in width and it's got a normal round profile on it and they're roughly about 140 millimeters diameter so yeah 4.8 uh, mil 4.7 millimeters in that width here so because you've got a move in the head moves which is the technical name for that this top plate cut in angle that's the angle that the grinding wheel comes in to the tooth and a grinding wheel does this much more efficiently than any round file can because you've got to hold a round file at a certain angle to get that 60 degree uh, angle in. But with a grinder, there's, uh, you can you know, move it to whatever angle you want. But the most common angle is 60 degrees. So if before we're going to reprofile the grinder, we need to set it up uh, so that we can profile it. And what we will do is put this top plate adjustment angle to zero degrees and we'll put this to 90 degrees. Now when we look at a grinding wheel you've got two parallel sections of the grinding wheel so to make a hexa, you need a 120 degree V. So it's pretty straightforward and easy. But to guess 120 degrees, yeah, you could end up with any anything. So it's much easier if you have, uh, look, I've got a little bit of plastic here. This is a 30 degree angle because if this is 90 degrees, a right angle is 90 degrees and we add another 30 degrees to the right angle that becomes 120 so I've made this little wedge this little wedge is just under four inches in length 30 degree angle here it will sit between right in that spot there and you can see it on the bottom there so make sure that it's, it's 30 degrees just lock that up and by holding your uh, grinding stone like this and moving it and bringing the grinding wheel down and moving it backwards and forwards you'll end up putting a beveled angle on there so you'll end up with 90 degrees on the side of the wheel and you'll end up with a 30 degrees down there and that makes 120 so when you've done that side there you can do the other side and that's just a matter of pulling that out and turning that around and doing the same thing putting it in that position and just keep your fingers away from the grinding wheel and uh, do it that way the other method that I tend to use is this is a diamond file and diamond file takes off quite a fair bit so uh, I'll just demonstrate that with a diamond file so once you start the grinder up, it's just a matter of bringing the wheel down. So you just take it nice and slow with the diamond file. Let me just turn that off. We'll zoom in there so that you can see that. Needs a bit more with a diamond file. A little bit difficult to see it. Just 
just do a little bit at a time. Zoom in and zoom out. There we go. Look, that's pretty good. That's your 120 degrees there. Nothing wrong with that. And all you had to do was make a little bit of plastic uh, like that. And it's just so easy to dress the wheel. And as you can see, you've got a 120 degree uh, dressed wheel. Make sure that the sides are even. So try it, try and dress. And the other thing that's really important, try and make sure that you're using uh, 80 grit. Don't use a low quality wheel uh, because you'll find out that you won't get really nice edges on a low quality wheel uh, yeah, because these corners that are on the wheel are quite sharp. Uh, and if you use a 60 grit wheel, you don't get a really nice edge. So that's how you set that up. It's quite easy. You don't need any special tools. As I said, uh, just find yourself some plastic protractor or something and make a little wedge like that that fits in there and 30 degrees that side of the wheel, 30 degrees that side of the wheel. Then you've got your V-shape as shown uh, here. So that's all you've got to do. It's pretty straightforward and simple. The amount of times that you probably need to dress the wheel isn't a real lot. Uh, you may have to dress it slightly, very, very slightly after five or six chains. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's not a big deal to do that. Anyway, that's uh, uh, my take on it. Uh, hopefully those instructions uh, really help and uh, guide you in the right direction of dressing your wheel and using the hexa. If you were doing the Husqvarna's uh, and you wanted to keep the, the profile of the Husqvarna's X cut, then what I would do is, which is time consuming, you could profile this grinding wheel uh, so that it, that it replicates that. Just a little bit fiddly, but you can do it. I've done it before, uh, but I don't use X-Cut a lot. I stick with uh, Stills Hexa because it's uh, simple. Now, the other thing is on the Still USG grinder, you can buy the uh, grinding wheel that looks exactly the way that I just ground it. So it is available from a Still on a USG grinder. And... As I said, if you want to do it on an Oregon-style grinder, uh, well, you've seen how to do it. So that's the end result. It came out really well. That is razor sharp. This is what happens when you use 80 grit wheels. Get beautiful sharp edges. And that's it. As you can see, when you look at that angle, it comes down uh, the side plate quite a fair bit. And you can vary that slightly, but as I was saying before, the side plate the width of that side plate is about three millimeters. So you, you can come down on that side plate, say two millimeters. I could possibly come down a little bit more than that. But nonetheless, it's uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. So in conclusion, we've replicated the stills hexa without any problem whatsoever and that's what it looks like there 65 degrees in 
and that's what it looks like there. A couple of degrees either way is not going to make a huge deal of difference. But where you notice on Husqvarna's X cut, it is different. You can see that the point, that point there, only comes down on the side plate nowhere near as much as what still hexes uh, does. And it's 40 degrees. So I'll just sort of grab the pointer. We mentioned that still's angle here came in at 65 degrees. It's 40 degrees on here. So it's really aggressive, that point. And it comes in for about one and a half millimetres. And then as you can see, it changes direction. Uh, got this sweeping C shape. So it is a little bit different. Just this part here. So you can replicate this on a grinding wheel. It depends whether you want to do that or not. But if you put a round file through it, you're going to destroy that shape. Simple as that. It's the only thing I've got against this. They sell this profile, but you only get to use it once. There's no file available. And the only thing, when I spoke to the Husqvarna dealer and I mentioned it to him, he said, oh, yeah, we just profile our wheel a little bit. So, But I could imagine how good that would be. Don't have a lot of faith in a, uh, a lot of the people that grind uh, your chains up. <laughs> half the time they grind half of them away. So, yeah, that's pretty much my take on part two. There won't be no part three. I think there's enough information out there that I've shown that should enable you to uh, grind up your profile, your hexa profile. And as I said, this part here is not as critical as this part. It's the side plate, this working corner that is the most critical. And when you hold it and look in from this angle, it looks like a spear. And that's what penetrates the timber. Because we don't cut the timber with this in the true technical sense. It spears the timber and it pulls the chip out. It doesn't cut like a knife. It's like an axe. And that's what an axe does when, when we say you know, a cutting axe. It takes repetitive cuts before you can penetrate through the log. And this is exactly the same thing, that this working corner penetrates the log then the tooth behind it does exactly the same thing and it just thousands and thousands of cuts about two and a half thousand every minute until you finally penetrate through the log and you cut through it and that's how it works anyway thanks for watching bye for now